Hey traders, Jason here from Lever Brothers. So you can see the title of my video here. Let's face it, August was a terrible month. Um, I'm just gonna call a spade a spade. It, it really was not a good month at all. In fact, it was one of the worst months I can remember in, in, in several years. Okay. I, I keep track of trades. I keep all the, I keep track of all the, the Lever Brothers setups that are posted on the, on the trading list. Um, I post many of the charts in our archives. Most months we have what I would consider to be like too many good setups to pick from. August was terrible. Okay. There just weren't that many. There weren't that many. The quality was low. The ones that the ones that set up and tried to do well, did well for like a week and went like 10%, but then faded. Um, it just, the robustness wasn't there. The energy wasn't there. It, it just, it really just wasn't a great month. So in this video, I'm going to go through some of them just to give you an idea of how the month went. So if you're sitting out there thinking like August was a challenge, I guess maybe you can take some comfort that it's not, it wasn't just you, the market really wasn't offering a whole lot. All right, let's go through some of these. So Chewy was a trade long and short for us. First, it was a short over here, broke down at 24. You can see down, down, carry trade, gap down. Our, our target was 20, so it actually worked out really well. And then you could see it went up. So great trade, but only lasted three days. Then we had it as a um, going the other direction. You can see it moved up, it flagged over here. Um, but you can see how, you know, it moved up and then it faded, uh, you know, it had inside day, inside day, and then it's fading backwards. So this, this one actually worked out, you know, it's, it's still a live trade if you're in, uh, today. Uh, but it did okay. This was like, you know, this, this was a considered a pretty good trade for the month, um, relative to everything else. So FRD, this is pretty typical. We had a stock here. Uh, you can see, you know, cup and handle here breaks out 28 half, grind, 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 and then we have back to back down days, which should obviously stop you out. But this is typically what happened. Like instead of getting a nice move up, a back test, and then a second leg, we're just talking grind, 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 and then gives enough back that it stops you out. You make like 10% in a week, a little bit more than a week, uh, and that's all the market was offering at that time. Next one, G E H C. Uh, this one, you know, broke out here, moved up really nicely, but then gave it all back. This turns into an absolute sloppy mess that I want absolutely no part of. If you compare like an entry to the current price, you say, hey, that's not bad. It's like almost 10%, but like you're not going to hold through this sloppy mess. Uh, it just completely lacked any type of flow. Here's HOUS. Um, broke out here, followed through one day, and then just faded and gave it all back. That, like this happened all the time where we had perfectly good setups here that had clearly definable resistance and those resistance levels were taken out and we got a little bit of follow through for a couple days and stocks went like 10%, but then they just faded and gave it all back. Here is IOVA. So this was a uh, we had this one as kind of a breakout here at 10 bucks. Okay, it went from, you know, the low there up to there, and you can see that it it you know moved above 10, consolidated here. We got back to back inside candles, moved up again, and then you can see faded. So nothing wrong with this. This was actually a really this was a solid trade. You know, 10 to 12 and a half. You're not going to top pick that, but even 10 to 12, that's a solid move. Now half the gain has been given back. Um, this like this was one of the better ones of the month, and if this is one of the better ones, that's kind of indicative of like you know slim pickings that were available. Here's NRG moved up a little you know consolidation pattern there, like an ascending triangle. Tried to break out there, gave it all back. Tried to break out again there, and now it's giving it all back. So this kind of stuff happened where you got moves, but then they just failed. Here's Otex, doesn't look like much, but we got a nice move here. It flags here, okay? Volume over here was, you know, pretty decent, okay? So moves up, lots of up days, good volume, consolidating quietly in a little flag pattern, breaks out, follows through for, uh, you know, a half a day or whatever, and then it just fades backwards. If the market's in good shape, this would follow through a lot more, come back, test a moving average, go again. But in August, we, you know, you get like one move that would last anywhere from, you know, two to five days, and then they would just fade. 
uh, Papa John's. This one actually has, has done okay. It came out of a base there. There was a resistance level there where you can see, you know, false breakout there, false breakout there, comes down and tests the 21 one more time, and then we have a big move up, and now it's trading up here. So, you know, that's tough. You got like, you know, move up here, but then a, a stiff enough move down there that you, you know, if you're if you're a longer term swing trader, you probably sit through that. But if you recognize the conditions in August, you probably have stops really tight. Um, and so you get a, you know, the fake move up and then the fake move down. And now we got to move up and it's kind of hard to hold through that unless you're just really committed and believe in that company. QDEL moved up sideways, little resistance level here at 42. You can see once 42 is uh, established as resistance there, we have a very quiet inside day there. That's exactly what you want to see. We got a quiet day right underneath resistance. Then we got a breakout day there moves up. But then as you can see, like two weeks later, it's just flat. Okay. So it's just, and, and then obviously you can see what's happened the last couple of days. It's kind of, it's faded all the way back down to 42. So this is like typical of what the month was like. We had, you get a move, but that's it. You know, so inst instead of getting moves that last longer or go further, we're getting quicker moves that don't go very far. And you got to be ahead of the, you, you just got to be ahead taking profits and being content with smaller gains. Otherwise you give them back. Here's Unity. So Unity was, had this as a breakout over here at like 16 half. My target was right over here at 18 and a quarter. It came up just short. But again, typical of what was going on at, the, at this time. We have a 10% move that lasted about a week and then it faded and gave it all back. Like that was a typical move in August. Okay, if the market was acting well, it would have gone further, but the market was eh. And, uh, you know, beneath the surface, we had a lot of stocks not doing that great. Here's Under Armour. This, you know, this stock's been in trouble for a long time. It gapped up. Everyone's talking about like a, a re, you know, or what are they saying? Like some sort of not like, or, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm having a hard time finding the words, but like they're talking about like a recovery situation where this, where this company's finally figured it out. Stock moves up, huge volume, consolidates breaks out lasts a week but then as you can see it just fades okay if the market was stronger it would have kept going okay it would have gone longer it would have gone a little bit further it would have come back and tested a key moving average it would have legged up a second time but it, like we got one move that let you know that didn't even go 10 percent, and then it faded and gave it all back uh here's unit so this one was you know a decent base here okay so we have a breakout there but then it gives it all back with the carry trade. And then we get a move, you know, we get it, we get another breakout attempt and then that's given back. The 21 is nice support here. And then it moves up and it's consolidating. So if you compare, like say initial breakout at, at four there and current price at 4.4, that's a 10% move in one month. Obviously that's fantastic. If you knew that was gonna happen, you'd put your entire portfolio in that and just, you know, not look at the market for a month. But this is sloppy enough that you're probably not going to sit through this, okay? Not when the entire market is, not, you know, not when there's a lack of good movement out there. You're not going to sit tight with that. So it, it worked out okay, small win, small loss. Uh, but certainly this is indicative of what was going on, and it's not that exciting. A uh, couple more here. Wolf, Wolf's been in trouble for a really long time. So this as a short worked out well. Broke down there, broke down there broke down there. These guys have been trending down for a long time. Um, Exxon Mobil can have a breakout here. Whoops, let me redraw that. So you have a breakout attempt here, but you can see like it moves above the highs, then comes back, tries again, comes back, tries again, falls hard, tries again, and it, you know, ultimately it just becomes a mess. Okay. So not a bad setup, you know, stock moves up, moves sideways. Obvious resistance level, consolidating for several months, looks like a, a decent play, uh, but just never could get any traction. Just like it's just not that kind of market to get follow through and such. Um, Zeta turned out really well for us. It broke out here, moved up. This here is earnings, and you know sometimes I hold into earnings, but this earnings season I just wasn't willing. Um, so you can see what happened there. It gapped up and ultimately did really well. Um, but couldn't nail this entire thing until you got in after earnings. So overall, not a great month, not that many good setups. This obviously isn't all of them. 
Um, the ones that were pretty good, like they, they only lasted a few days or a week and only went like five to 10%. And if you didn't get out, you gave it all back. Okay. I, I personally did okay. Um, I came into the month having nailed, like I doubled my money in, in SMR in June and July. So that was a really good trade. So I came into August, you know, feeling good because I had doubled my money here. Um, I nailed the Tesla leverage ETF over here. Like that was a double for me too. Um, so I came into to August, you know, kind of feeling confident, you know, feeling good that I had nailed some good moves. My biggest move in August was Rocket Lab. Um, I nailed this entire move. Uh, that was my, that was, it's my biggest position and it was my best, it was my best one. So that kind of worked out. But overall, if I compare August to, any other month over the last several years, August was by far the, the worst, okay? It was the least number of good setups. They didn't last long. They don't go far. If you're a surfer and you're looking for like only really good waves, like there just weren't that many good waves to be had. And then if you got impatient and you jumped on a, on a wave and you realized soon after like this isn't going to last very long, I should just jump off and go look for another one. So the reason I'm posting this is just to kind of like in the interest of like full disclosure and just being honest with you, if you had a tough month, it wasn't just you. There really wasn't that many great trades to be had. If you bought the carry trade gap down, you you may have had an awesome month. But if you're looking for just like very traditional setups where stocks are breaking out of ranges or pulling back within uptrends, there weren't that many to be had. It is what it is. We move into September. I don't expect things to get that much better. Um, so preserve capital for you know for better waves that are coming in the future. All right. Hope this helps. We'll see you next time.